sucked. All right, in my vlog, I mentioned I was playing a bunch of games, and I actually did record a vlog of that after doing, well, recording the vlog. But I did not like the, I didn't necessarily like the way all of them turned out, so I wanted to talk about them in a slightly different way. So hopefully I, you know, am satisfied with the way I'm uh, talking about the games. But the first game that I was talking about was Republic Commando on the PC. Uh, this is a first-person tactical uh, shooter set in the Star Wars universe where you control a special breed of clone troopers that are commandos, Delta Squad, uh, starring you, the boss, Sev, uh, Scorch, and Fixer, uh, each with their own code number too. You're uh, Delta 38. And I really, really like this game. Like, I played it way back when, uh, ironically, when I was visiting my relative, my cousin had the game and I played it and I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. He was going to give it away to me, but I was like, I beat it before that. So I was like, nah, I don't really need it. It didn't really have much replay value. And that's probably one of the downsides of uh, the game in a sense, but I'll get onto that. So I, I bought my own copy of the disc to go play it again. I did not get the Steam copy of it, which you probably, if you had to get any version of Republic Commando, get the Steam version mainly because so you don't have to go through the process of having to install the disc, even though it is only one disc. But the reason I bring that up is because uh, I was lucky that Republic Commando was able to install on my uh, Windows 7 64-bit system because that game was actually supposed to be only be installed on XP in uh, 2003 of uh, Windows. And I'll also bring that up because I'll actually I'll talk about that in uh for another Star Wars game that I'll mention. But Republic Commando liked it back then, and I still like it now. Although I can now tell what the uh, flaws are and such, but despite all the flaws, I really really like the game. So I want to talk about the things I liked about it and the things I didn't like about it. Let's see. Um, well, first off. You only go through three uh, three big missions in this game. Uh, the battle on Geonosis of when the movie started. Um, there I go again with the ums. Uh, the, the prosecutor battle and the... Uh, uh, I hate myself for that. Geonosis, prosecutor battle, the planet Kashik Or Kashik. Yeah, they, they say Kashik. Kind of like Kashik, so they're trying to cash in on the planet, which is kind of true because they're trying to take over it. But you know, you know, if you've seen the third movie and such, and you get you get the idea of that, and playing the Battlefront games, which you should also play too. So there's three campaigns, each of them have five parts. So this game, from from an outside view, it looks really really short because you just only play three big campaigns from Geonosis, prosec the Prosecutorship, and the Wookiee Planet, but there are five but they each have five uh, parts in them. And when you add them all up, um, playtime wise, it is kind of, it is long, but it feels kind of, it feels kind of short. Like when you, you know, back away and like look at it as a whole. So while I, I did like the campaign, the prosecutor uh, campaign was, or no, not was, is probably my favorite one because it splits up your team and you got to go, and you go through this like survival horror element of the game that it tries. Like it's not scary, scary, but you know, the atmosphere and the idea of it was very cool. And the final battle to defend the ship is pretty fucking awesome. I love that part. I would play that part over and over again, even though now I notice how easy it was. I, it was a lot cooler when I was playing it as a kid because you got to set up traps and get your team set up so that you can uh, ambush the, uh, the uh, enemy that that's invading. I won't say who, but you can probably figure out who it is. So, I, I did enjoy the campaign, but I did think it was kind of short, in my opinion. Mm, what else did I like about it? Well, I liked your teammates. Your teammates are, are you know, this game, this game is funny, like unintentional, or not unintentional. It's kind of like, um, it injects a bit of light humor into it, where you're teamer is kind of sarcastic with um you know with things that happen like uh when you're shooting trandoshans and you blow off blow them blow their backpacks off and they start jetting up into the sky uh, i think fixer or scorch says hey i didn't know trandoshans can fly and other other things like 
th there's personality to the team like even the character you control so i really really enjoyed uh you know listening to them to them talk even though they say the same things half the time the unique dialogues are also very very fun to listen to so i really like your teammates and if there was uh, something negative about your teammates that I didn't really like is um, you can't, they, they don't, uh, when they fight, they only use the uh, main uh, assault rifle, the DC-17, and they don't ever change out for like a different weapon to like fight uh, the enemy. Because uh, the only way they can use other weapons like grenades, sniper rifle, and uh, grenade launchers is if you set them up at uh, over pieces of cover where there will be an icon like here, there's a sniper rifle icon. So you'd be like, give us cover there, Sev, or something. You don't tell who goes there. It's just whoever is uh, closest, I guess, to uh, go do it. And supposedly they each specialize in... Um, Sev is specializes in sniping, Scorch uh, specializes in uh, explosives, and Fixer specializes in uh, hacking, which is kind of ironic with most of their names, although I'm still not too sure about how Sev's name uh, uh, works with the sniper rifle role. So I like your, I, I like your care, I like the, I like the team, uh, and the thing I didn't like about them was uh, you, they can't switch weapons, and uh, let's see. I can't say they're bad shots because they are really good shots and the, the times that I ax that I uh, get in front of their fire and get instant killed by it, it's it's not really their fault because uh, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of the times I got them shot but sometimes they did they did get in my way especially when I was firing the grenade launcher and then it gets uh, both of us killed and it's like scourge what the fuck don't get in my way idiot Hmm, there's not much there's not much I can think of or recall uh, me hating uh, not that involved not disliking uh, your Kimi. Well whatever I didn't dislike whatever I dislike about them um, does not change the fact that I do really really like uh, the the team aspect of this game which is a lot of fun because uh, let's see I'm trying to think uh, the only one that bad thing that it's not necessarily your uh, teammates fault it's mainly because of the game because there's a there are times when you get incapacitated and there's just one thing that really really bothered me is you cannot drag uh, or your teammates can't drag you out of like uh, the hot zone or like you can't drag them out of the hot zone you have to revive them right there with your uh, defibrillator gun which is what I'm calling, but it basically it revives you. So you have to revive them on the spot, and by the way, the defibrillator gun, which I'm gonna call, uh, is very practical in this game. So it's not like, you know, you gotta, you gotta go find med kits, or you have to uh, like do some other things, or something dumb like, you know, you give them CPR or something to like bring them back to life. Nope, you just, ha you just carry a defibrillator gun with you and bam, they come back out. The, the annoying thing is that you can't drag them out of, out of a, a firefight to heal them like behind cover or something. It's really annoying because there are times you just, um, there are times that, you know, the firefight, like they can't, they're, they're not bad shots and they're not useless, but when you go down, and you tell them to maintain their orders, they they're, they sometimes don't do a good job of taking out the enemies. Like, half the time, usually, I'd have to, like, interrupt them and be like, Need! Back to! Now! And it's like, they're all they're always like, oh, Standard protocol, sir! We, we can't revive you until, um, until we finish the battle, which they don't, but they revive you anyways, and they listen, which is kind of... Uh, kind of weird that they're they're always talking about like I gotta finish these guys first before reviving you, but you can just tell them to come revive you. Honestly, I, I really think that they should have had a ability to drag you and your teammates uh, away from the battlefield to recover. So that was one thing that I uh, that would have been a lot better. Mm, I like the weapons in this game. You got your DC-17 gun, which is really really cool, and in the Star Wars uh, universe of weapons, uh, I keep saying us again. It's very, very. I think it's very, very smart because you can ch you can change out the attachments on it from uh, the assault rifle to a sniper rifle to a grenade launcher, and it's really, really cool. And you know that also gives them the ability to carry special weapons that they find on each different planet. Like on Geonosis, there's a special Geonosis gun. On the Prosecutor, there are also special guns there too, like shotguns and miniguns. 
And by the way, oh, I was playing this game on hard. So if I ever say anything like, oh, they kill you too quickly or you can't survive anything, it's because I was playing on hard. So just remember to keep that in mind. But anyways, the miniguns. When you use the minigun, it is pretty awesome, but it doesn't kill as well as when it's in the hands of the enemies because the uh, Trend Ocean's Elite, the, the second they start up the gun, you're, you're pretty much dead, and that really, really uh, irritated me. Also, hard mode is not that hard. It's definitely very doable, which is uh, good because other games like, say, Call of Duty, it's just like you don't even stand a chance. You have to be like, you have to have clairvoyance and know what's coming up ahead and like shoot before you're actually sub like... Like, you're supposed to shoot where you re you realistically would not have known they would have appeared from. At least not without strategics and stuff, but you know what I mean. Like, like uh, you, you just kind of mess, you just kind of not break the game, but you do, you do something that you're not supposed to know yet in the game. Uh, but yeah, the weapons are really cool. And then on uh, Kashyyyk, you also get the Wookiee weapons, the Bowcaster, which I thought sucked, but... But once uh, you do the concentrate fire on enemies, where you basically tell your entire squad to fire on that one enemy like a super battle droid because he has lots and lots of health, no matter the difficulty from what I can tell. And you can see their health bar. And I didn't realize how powerful the bowcasters are when you charge them up, so I was like... But it just doesn't feel like it has any impact. It's just like when it hits the enemies that are not regular uh, uh, battle droids, it's just like, oh. And it's like... It didn't it didn't stun him. It didn't seem to do anything, but it did do a lot of damage And then there's the Wookiee rocket launcher, which is pretty fucking awesome uh, And I keep saying this in the last vlog and I still haven't checked it up because I'm not bothered to but I remember I remember someone saying like not to use the Wookiee rocket launcher on either the Magna guards, which are the, you know the General Gr Grievous's bodyguards with the sticks you see in uh, episode 3 and uh, it was either don't use it on the Magna Guards or don't use it on the Spider Droid. If it was don't use it on the Spider Droids, you, sir, are a fucking retard. Because those Spider Droids, basically, they're these mini bosses that you have to tactically take out. You never face one by yourself. You always face them with at least one teammate. And in the final battle, you have to face it with only one of your teammates. And it was... <laughs> I, I didn't really like it. Uh, especially since your grenade launchers do not do anything against them. Like, I tried it. I tried it, I, I set like uh, the concentrate fire icon on them, saw their health, fired a grenade launch, it only took down a pixel, a pixel of health, and I was like, this is an anti-armor gun, isn't it? it? It doesn't make any sense, you have to shoot them in the eye, which uh, video game wise, it's just like, it's covered up, then it looks, then it covers up, looks, and it's like, why? I mean, you have a separate like camera that pops, or a sensor that pops up that scans the area, because they keep telling you to shoot it in the optics, the, which is the eye and it just uh, at least on hard it, it like you know damage took very very long but when you had the Wookiee rocket launcher bam he's dead if uh, what I was think if uh, the guy that I was thinking of said like not to use it on the spider droids you are retarded okay because those spider droids will fuck you up and you have to destroy them in order to proceed in the game I wish you could sneak past them but uh, they don't let you you, you got to take out the battle, dro battle droids in like a different arena with a different setup of like cover and ammo and such and in the in the last part they, they give you tons of uh ammo everywhere and i i always i'm all i'm one of those types that like you know tries to save his uh weapons for like when you really really need that weapon because you don't want to be caught in a situation where it's like oh if only i had a grenade launcher but nope i used it much much earlier on so and there weren't any pickups later on and that was um and, and that was my mentality with it. But when you're playing Kashyyyk, they give you ammo everywhere. So, you know, just fire away and just have fun. They want you to have fun. They don't necessarily want to you to go through that. This game, I get the feeling it doesn't want you to go through that that uh, video game mentality where it's just like you got to be conservative. You got to do all this stuff because, well, this is not a survival hole or survival game for one thing. Because, you know, in survival horror, you got to be you got to conserve your ammo and stuff. But let's see. I, th I think I'll go on to what I didn't like about the weapons. Uh, I don't like the reticule on your weapons except the grenade launcher. And the reason I say that is because it never actually hits where it suggests or where it claims to hit. Because, for instance, a sniper rifle has a um, has a little cross. And, and you think, like, if you shoot in the middle, that's where the shots would go, right? 
makes sense. But when I aim at like the like the enemy's like head, it just like like flies past their ear, and I'm like, what? Why'd that happen? One time I was I was shooting a super battle droid, and I was aiming like like right where his like mechanical nipple was. I fired and it went under his armpit and said, and I'm like, what? You, I'm like, you, like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? What you had to do in this game for the sniper rifle and the, um, oh, I'm sorry if my nose is running because I was sh just shoveling snow outside. What you have to do is that you have to actually zoom into the gun so your shots would actually go where they are. That always bugged me in video games because you're technically aiming in the same spot that your that the reticle says uh, you're shooting, but. The, the bullets or your shots will only go straight when you start aiming at, um, when you zoom in and look up at your iron sights to aim. And that's the, and that's the only way to guarantee that you hit any, uh, hit anything with, uh, wherever you're aiming at. So, uh, always do that. Uh, it is a little, it, like, from what I was playing, it was very, I wouldn't say awkward. It was kind of, it was more like it was kind of stiff because... Uh, Cause unlike uh, other shooters where you hold like say the right mouse button to just hold to like uh, look through your iron sights and shoot this you have to um it, it, it's it just clips on you can't change the controls for wait no you can but uh, basically it locks in place so you, you just press like the Z button locks in you wanna you wanna zoom out of it you uh um, you uh press the Z again which is also another annoying thing with the sniper rifle you have to I only found a few ways to get out of like the sniper rifle zoom because uh, when you zoom in, you zoom in at 10 times and then 20 times and you press again to uh, unzoom, which it, it, it was very, very annoying because like I'll, I'll sometimes need because I want to use the sniper rifle to kill some other targets in, in the distance or because uh, it does a lot of damage, even though it really doesn't feel like it. Oh, certain weapons do better against certain enemies. Like for instance, the Republic weapons are were designed to be better against uh, hit, uh, uh, destroying uh, droids and the Trandoshan weapons were better against uh, living things. <clears throat> Can't think of anything to talk about the weapons. Uh, aside from the fact that I like them and despite some flaws that are really annoying with the aiming and such, uh, I, I still liked it a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, I like the level design because uh, what they want you to do because this is the tactical aspect of it is to be aware of your surroundings like you know you don't you don't just jump into like a firefight and just be like I'm just gonna be a sharpshooter and shoot down everything with my teammates and that's it no if you looked around there might be like a turret you can use and uh, yeah I know that doesn't sound impressive but just shut up and listen there might be turrets around there might be ammo and place and places you're supposed to get an advantage of uh, shooting your enemies from and uh my personal favorite oh and there may be like explosive canisters around that you know you can shoot that and explode and kill everyone that's standing near there and my favorite is when there's a um, hanging crate over their heads which yeah yeah it's all set up but you know what the game rewards you for you know uh being aware of your surroundings and, uh, and making use of it because uh in uh, the last in the last planet campaign uh, uh, Kashyyyk there's these parts where they'll throw these droid dispensers where it will continuously keep spawning droids and you got to keep fighting them and the only way it's gonna stop is if you put a detonator on it which takes about 20 seconds and in that time about in that time a few more droids will uh, pop up and well basically that's really really slow to like destroy dispensers. so there are these crates that are hanging over the uh, droid dispensers and you can shoot that have it land and instantly destroy the droid dispensers it saves so much ammo especially when you have to take down like super battle droids i don't know how the droid dispenser like manages to keep spitting out droids like you you must eventually run out of materials right but it is a video game and the whole point is that you have to destroy that thing before or else you're just gonna keep um or else you're just gonna keep fighting droids and wasting ammo and wasting time oh i forgot i keep forgetting about this but uh another tactical part of the game are the grenades and i should have said this in the weapons you have four different type of grenades the thermal detonator which is like a pineapple grenade the um uh the drumstick grenade which when you throw it it's the green grenade you throw it and it just immediately explodes on impact if it lands on an enemy or it explodes a little afterwards uh if it doesn't hit an enemy 
I don't want to put a uh counter on this, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. Hmm. And then there's the electric grenade or the shot grenade. Actually, the flashbang comes first, but that's probably self-explanatory. That's really, really useful against uh, li the living creatures because it, it stuns them because it blinds them like a flashbang would, at least uh, for a little while. And it's very helpful because they stand still from it if they see it. And then there's the shock grenades, which are very, very useful against the droid. But apparently, uh, they are also very good at killing yourself, too. Uh, a thing I would have liked the shock grenade to do is to act like a defibrillator grenade like you throw it at a down teammate or next to a down teammate and it, you know it like Zaps them back to life. That would have been kind of cool. That would have been a really cool positive effect of the grenade But you know the, it, it doesn't do that and that's okay But it, it, it's really good at stunning uh, Droids specifically because it, it zaps them because they're like they're uh, mechanical and they make a funny noise like a <laughs> It's funny. Oh, yeah, the super battle droids talk which is kind of funny, too. Uh, but yeah, the level design, um, yeah, it's very, very good, all right? Every single, like, part I'm going through, it, it's very fresh, it's very original, with, like, some parts that repeat, like, for instance, you gotta go destroy or turn turn off some console generators and stuff, and those parts repeat, and that's okay, because that's what those types of locations would be, but I liked it a lot, and like I said, the uh, Prosecutor campaign is probably my favorite one to go through because of the uh, survival horror element of it, and the fact that you get to visit, see what the inside of uh, uh, Republic Battleship looks like in uh, detail, unlike uh, Battlefront 2 where it just kind of did the very basics for, for good reasons. Mm, let's see, let's see. Uh, I would say I like Kashyyyk too, and I, and I do because they give you lots of ammo and stuff so you can just... You can just have fun because the game's about to end soon, so they, so they might, so they were like, oh, you know, I might let's just give them, let them have fun and just shoot stuff. Oh yeah, they're, they're uh, gameplay-wise, this makes sense, but it, it's kind of weird seeing uh, this if you think about it. it. Is uh everywhere, every step, there's almost always a back to dispenser somewhere, and they're always functional too. Uh, like it's like I'm in enemy territory, and they have back to dispensers. And it's like, well, the battle droids don't use it, but I guess you could kind of justify, um, let's see, the other cre the, the living creatures that might use them, but I don't really see them using it because apparently uh, only the commandos can use them because um, the boss makes a comment like, uh, well, I could probably have helped these clone troopers, but they're not designed to be able to use uh, the Bacta implants. And it's like, so it's like... Like, why would you have Bacta everywhere, like, outside of it being for our game? Anyways, I'm not complaining about that because they really do save you a lot of the time, especially when I was playing on hard. The, the, but the thing I, th I th found was uh, weird, it was just that they were everywhere. Because after, like, each battle, I'd run back to a previous Bacta dispenser, walk forward, only to find out there's another Bacta tag. And I'm like, I'm like, hmm... So eventually I caught on and just be like, after every battle, it's like, let's go on. And, and you know, I was kind of expecting your teammates to be like, sir, shouldn't we go back and get some back to And I was like, nope, the developers probably put a back to tank in front of us somewhere. So let's go, gr so let's go there and, gra and grab it. And sure enough, there is. So this, this game really wants you to have fun. It does have frustrating moments, but it's not that bad. Plus you can always save scum like I did. Because uh, some enemies, like these, the scavenger droids, man, fuck those things, okay? Those things, like, they, they tear you to shreds, and they're extremely hard to hit. Okay, like, in the prosecutor campaign, and I know I said it's my favorite, but, it, the, you know, it has its bad moments, too, which will, which is with the scavenger droids, which electrocute you, and your health drops like a fucking brick. And they're really hard to hit. Uh, and you don't want to waste, like, say, grenade or uh, grenade launchers on it, because uh, in the prosecutor campaign, ammo is very, very scarce. So you really, really did not want to like use up any ammo. So you had to make sure your shots count. And those guys, they just, they just fuck you up, especially when they come in groups. And throwing grenades does not do anything. Your grenades do not. Oh, I guess this is my other flaw. Your grenades do not have a big enough uh, explosion or splash damage to actually hit anything, because. I threw a shock grenade because, you know, that would make sense. And it did nothing. It did not even reach the uh, scavenger. So, like, I, I got killed a lot of the time and I had to save scum to, like, just destroy them because it was getting really, really annoying. 
But I do plan to go through uh, the prosecutor or go through uh, the game on stream on normal just just to have fun. So you unlock nothing for playing on hard, as I discovered, by the way. Uh, basically, all the features it says you unlock, you just unlock it by playing the game normally. Which is kind of lame, but mm, that, that'd be kind of cool. I wish they had some game content related unlocks that you would get, because then that would give more incentive to uh, play the game at the very least. So, you know, just, just play this game on normal. There's no shame in not playing on hard. You just don't get anything on hard. I, I only played it to see if I would get anything on hard. And let's see. I, I In the vlog that I was doing previously, I had notes written down about uh about what i wanted to talk about because there was a lot i wanted to talk about there's a lot i i can think of to talk about but you know my my brain sucks i got visual snow so it makes me like repeat things and just not think uh fast enough it would there, there's a lot of like empty space in it <laughs> space Let's see, I guess I would go on to say about the truly, truly negative things about it is, uh, well, there's, there's the fact that the game's short, um, the conclusion to the game kind of sucks, and it also feels like the game kind of cheaped out on you by not letting you go through a bunch of other missions you could be doing, like, like mini missions in between, you, you're always doing the main campaigns. Sorry, the the main missions where it's like uh, it was like the most important missions where it gave the Republic uh, an edge over uh, the Federation. So, like, cause in in between uh, those missions, they would give you like a monologue about like how they're doing other jobs, and you never get to play them. I would rather get have the ability to play them instead of just being told like you know we did some stuff and then we had to do this one big thing. Which is pretty awesome. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, no co-op. That was a thing that I was very like. This game. I was talking with Unreal, and I th and we both agreed that this Republic Commando is so built perfectly for a co-op game, and you can kind of forgive it being on uh, the PC back then. You probably couldn't do online co-op that. Uh, the, um, a stable online co-op and you, but you could have probably done a two-player on on a uh, Xbox even though at one point you both have to separate which uh, you know that that makes it difficult to have co-op but I feel like this game sets itself up perfectly for co-op and that if they ever make a sequel to this game you gotta have co-op because it would just be a whole lot of fun and yeah, base, and also there's there needs to be a sequel to this game. At least two more games, I feel, because it would just be great. Because you know, I I really really like the game. I like the characters. I like the uh, the firefight actions. I like the tactical acts aspect of it. The uh, the creators of this game really put a lot in, or really did a did a really good job in this game, and I really really uh, enjoyed it. And I wish they were able to make more. And that was the only disappointing part. It wasn't perfect, but you know, it sets itself up to have even more stuff. So maybe in a sequel, if they ever make it, I believe they talked about there was going to be a sequel, but it got canned because, uh, oh, let's can good ideas like Wiz World 100. Yeah. But if they ever make a sequel, you got to have co op. You got to make the missions like, uh, you got to have more missions to go through uh, and more weapons to play with. Uh, oh, I was going back to the weapons for a bit. You don't get a shotgun attachment, which I was very, very disappointed because it would have been fucking badass. Like, you can make the DC-17 gun even more badass by just adding more stuff to it. Um, let's see. I guess you could add an upgrade system to it. Like, for instance, hold more ammo and uh, shoot faster and just stuff. I, I think it would work very, very well. Or, or I guess you could, say, increase damage because maybe you can get a... You can upgrade your, um, your ammo to shoot, like, a much more powerful... Uh, charge to shoot down the enemies that's a thought upgrades and um oh in the multiplayer you get to customize your uh customize your character which i think that should also come into play for the game but it would actually add uh benefits to it like for instance you add a plate of armor you take more damage you have a uh, extra back to tank you can 
you can uh, like instant revive somebody on the thing. Extra ammo, you you carry more ammo. You have a radio pack. You get to call for assistance from your troops if you're in an open area, and you know a gunship would come in and just you know light the area up. Up and you know uh, thermal cameras to see in the dark, so you don't have to keep switching through visions. I don't get the difference between the tactical and the normal vision, even though there's like very slight differences. I do get the low light. I do understand the uh, low light vision because sometimes you'll go through the dark in the game. Not too many of them, which is a good idea. Uh, I would say add more visions, but eh. You, you would just make it really real really annoying having to switch through and cycle through unless you did the thing from uh, Metroid Prime 3 where you hold the visor button and you cl and you select uh, which visor you wanted to pick uh, let me think oh, I can't really I can't really think of anything I want to say about a Republic commando other than that if you've never played it I would suggest playing it play it on normal it's it's a lot of fun and I think you might actually be a big you might actually grow to really like the game and be a fan of it. So, uh, for those of you who have played it, uh, what did you think of Commando, uh, Republic Commando? Post your comments in the comment section. So, I hope this vlog wasn't very long. Oh my god, it's 30 minutes. Uh, I really, oh, I should have said in the beginning of the video to just listen to, to this because... You know, it'd just be a lot better. Anyways, this is six minutes longer than the one I did before. But anyways, this is Whisper 100. You're the viewers, and I'm the uh, video log on games uh, vlogger. So until then, stay tuned for more as I talk about other stuff.